Welcome back, our wonderful friends and viewers. We are so happy and excited to welcome you to another episode of Life is Spiritual Presents Real Life Testimonies. My name is Bamboo, also known as Tim, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Erica. Yes, hello, friends. I'm so excited uh, uh, to share our experiences with you. Life is spiritual. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for liking, sharing, commenting. We always look forward to hearing from you. And if you want uh, more help, you can always contact us on the numbers on the screen. And right uh, now, I just want to take this opportunity to invite our friend and sister in Christ, Sister Beth Ndebwa. Yeah. Yes. yes, I don't know if I pronounced it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so our sister Beth has a wonderful experience. Her testimony is about heaven this time. Um, I know we've heard so much about her, and now people want to know about heaven. Yes, so without wasting time, let me allow my sister introduce herself and share her, her testimony. Be blessed. Call your children. Call share let everyone watch this video shall we pray yes yeah. let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for a wonderful testimony we thank you for the gift of life we thank you lord that you've brought beth to share her story we pray that you bless this testimony and that those who are watching be blessed we pray oh god that you cover them with the precious blood of jesus spirit soul and body and surround them with a hedge of protection on every side heavenly father we pray that that which you desire for them to know may be communicated that they may walk in truth in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. my yeah. name is Degua. Mm -hmm. I'm born again. Christ is God in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm born in a family of 10. But now we are nine. I'm the seventh one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm born in central Kenya, mm -hmm. Nyandarawa. And I thank God for that. Now, oh, the testimony I'm about to give is about what happened. And I thank God because God said to Moses that I will show my mercies unto the one that I would like to show mercy. And to those that I would like to show favor, I will show favor. So it is not about how much I put effort, how much I do a lot of God's work that I may be shown what God showed me. But it is because of God's mercies alone. Mm -hmm. Now, it was on 8th December, the year 2014. And this was a fourth day of seven days fast. The reason and purpose that I had purpose to pray for seven days, I wanted God to show me the divine purpose in, in my life, his divine purpose. So I was seeking God to know what does God want with my life. And now the father of my children was not around so I decided this is the best time. I will fast for seven days, dry, without food, without any drink, without water. And I even made up my mind, I will not even swallow saliva. So nothing is going to go through that trachea or that esophagus. Mm. And uh, that is what I did. The first day I did it, I felt very weak. But I had made up my mind, I will fast. Mm -hmm. The second day, the same. I was very weak, but I could do some little shows I made food for my children. and then, But I didn't even taste. I just pressed there, they ate, I prepared them to bed. And then the third day was the worst. I was like very weak, such that it is like I was sick. Mm -hmm. So I decided, because I'm too weak, and even kneeling down was a problem. I can't kneel down when praying. I was just lying on the floor. So I decided I'm going to send the older kid to go and buy ready made food for themselves. And then I continue with the praying. But I was wondering what will happen the next four days that are coming because I had made up my mind for seven good days. Mm. Dry first. Mm. 
now this that day i did that i slept the fourth day was an amazing day and this is the day that has led me to come and give this testimony because when i woke up i was very strong and another thing i was very very excited and in the middle of stanam here mm-hmm. i was feeling like there's something that has been gouged out so i was feeling as if there's something that had come out mm-hmm. and uh, i was feeling very right inside me i was feeling very right very and light. very happy but i couldn't know why mm-hmm. very very light so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it was funny because the body was strong So I even those things that I was not able to do the first three days I did I mopped the house I wiped dusted and uh, I cooked for the kids and uh, then I <laughs> went outside the compound I just strolled praying and uh, singing and uh, I it's like I was not in fasting mm. then when the evening came I prepared the kids to bed And then I decided because today I'm very strong I'm going to take a bath and then come and put on pajamas and today because I'm strong I will pray for a longer time mm. kneeling and mm. seeking God mm. but now what happened when I entered into the bedroom I felt all of a sudden that I have grown very weak such that even I could not be able to move the clothes that I had during the day and uh, I wondered what has happened. Mm. I came, you know the, the the way the bed looks like. Mm. So I went at the top of the bed. Mm. I removed the pillow and sat down. Immediately sitting down, I felt dizziness. And then after dizziness I felt like uh, it's like I'm passing out. I can't breathe. And also I saw darkness. So I felt I have breath. It was gasping, gasping when you are looking like you 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 want to get some air but you're not getting it. Mm. So I you are struggling to breathe. Mm. Now I felt it's like a breath the rest, the 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 rest. And then darkness fell upon me. Immediately after that, I had a very loud voice. Remember it's like i have collapsed mm. so i can see anything but a very loud voice like a thunder mm. it felt the whole house and said come i am sent to come for you mm. so the the place where i was feeling like there's something that has come out and uh, the the place i feel i was feeling right i came out from there and immediately i passed through the fontanel immediately very fast mm. and now i was going to the one who has called me and i thought he is in the sitting room but mm. now instead of going into the sitting room now my walking or moving style changed i flew mm-hmm. and uh, i went through the roof the roof couldn't hold me mm-hmm. i passed mm-hmm. now i found the guy the other side outside the house Mm-hmm. The guy was so good. Mm-hmm. Like a family person, all an old friend and somebody I had a lot of confidence with. Mm-hmm. The guy was so so good such that when we met, mm-hmm. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. So so happy. Mm-hmm. Then he told me we go. Going now is moving upward. Mm-hmm. And this person was so generous to tell me this is I, he started first by showing cities of the world. We saw Nairobi because now I was in Muranga. We mm. saw Nairobi. We saw the the cities of Africa and then the way we pass and it is very fast because the the speed is so fast such that there's nothing on earth mm. can move with the speed that we were moving. Mm. Nothing mm. don't be cheated mm. by anybody. Mm. So it is fast and he's showing me and I can remember he showed me that is new york because i wow. had the, i have got the passion mm. even i like to go to america so <laughs> that is new york where you like both and now he showed me you saw that place there that is greece mm. now he started showing me 
this uh the mount so and so he showed me so mount you've traveled Kilimanjaro around the world and, uh, the yeah, yeah 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 he's taking me wow. <laughs> so we are we are moving mm. he's still moving mm. the guy is good i tell you now what i came to run i didn't know that the himalayas is a range a very big range the himalayas in many, in many yes. countries yes. and the peak the everest mm. so he told me this is the wrongest at uh, the highest mountain in the world mm. and now we can see any other physical feature mm. you see me mm. we moved speaking in a language that i could i can't remember now but that time we were talking the our conversation was so good we were not straining and uh, we we are so happy <laughs> and we are good friends <laughs> now i couldn't see anything any physical feature again Now he is encouraging me and giving me stories and uh, telling me where we are going. Now we reached to a certain point, very far, very very far. And he told me, "Can you look back?" I looked back, and I saw a small ball hanging somewhere, and the ball was divided into one side was dark and the other side was shining. Mm-hmm. So he told me. We came from there. That is us. But it was very far. It was like a small bell, like a like a tennis ball, mm-hmm. very small. Mm-hmm. So like half, like a, a half, like a, half, like a, half, a, like a half, a half, and the other side is dark. It's dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he told me, and I remember this word. He told me, now we have come to the end of Earth sphere. Now we are getting into dark sphere. Now mm. what I saw is darkness that I have never ever seen on earth even if you can dig a hole mm. you can see such kind of darkness anywhere on earth mm. it was like a wall and so I and I asked him is this darkness yeah this dark can I touch it only don't touch it's darkness and I asked him are we going to go through this darkness how now are we going to manage mm. then he quoted the this word in John 8:12 can we read absolutely John 8:12 mm. so pastor can can you John John 8, chapter 8 verse 12 uh, uh, then Jesus then spake Jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world He that follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Exactly. Wow. wow. Those are the words <laughs> that he quoted. Immediately by saying so, a highway of light formed. So we walked wow. in that highway of light. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> a highway formed the the darkness parted and uh, we passed through there. Mm. And I quote It is not walking but moving because that is not walking the mm. speed is very high mm. so we moved through the darkness mm. and then we reached a, a point in that stint and now this darkness is so quiet and uh, what's here and uh, I'm feeling afraid it should be the very main reason that made me to come for you is because of this realm because the rulers and the kings he said the rulers and the kings who rules here and all whose territory is this this is their territory mm. and if they fight you here they will shred you into pieces mm. do you know the way you shred sukuma wiki mm. that is the way they shred in mm. other words where you are is the second heaven Mm. to explain to someone who's watching she moved from the first heaven now to the second heaven mm. where the principalities and rulers of this world uh encamp yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah because he said rulers and another thing that i can't forget he said they are so wicked mm. they are like hooligans hooligans yeah mm. meaning and i ask him and why why will they destroy me? They, he told me they are going to destroy and to kill mm-hmm. if they find you here especially you mm-hmm. they hate okay they hate human but 
a person like you who has purpose to go where we are going, they hate you with a passion and they have noted you. If they find you, they will shred you such that it would be even better, even if each would get a small piece mm. they get, they will shred you in pieces. So their mm. satisfaction is yeah, derived yeah. on destroying yeah. mm, the uh, destruction of yes. man. Yes. To, to see that you cannot be found. Mm. Mm. Even if somebody would like to gather you, mm. they, if they get you, you can't be gathered. Wow. So, and I felt terrified, I asked him, and what if they come here? He told me they cannot come to the right. Mm. Another thing, do you remember the, the book of Psalms 24, 23 verse 4? I think, because he, he quoted. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms, Psalms 23 mm. and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Mm -hmm. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. He told me they cannot come here because I am with you. And that's why I was sent to come for you. So when he said, thy rod and thy staff comforted me, I felt comforted. I never feared again. Mm -hmm. I never feared again. Mm -hmm. Now, what also was my concern is the length of this fear now. Mm. So wrong. Mm. We are not coming to end and we are not getting tired. So I remembered. So it is true what the word of God says. That those that wait upon the road, mm. they shall grow from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. They shall soar with the wings like eagles. eagles yeah. They shall go and never get weird. Mm. So this thing, this moving, mm. I thought there's a, a certain point that we would get tired and sit. We were not getting tired. So we moved. And uh, this person was talking to me. And then I remembered a song in our language. Mm -hmm. And born in central that says, Wede Jega Kurayama. This person was saying, There is a very happy land very far away. That mm -hmm. person must have gone there. Mm -hmm. He must have gone there. Mm -hmm. That was not just singing. Mm -hmm. The place is far, mm -hmm. it is very far, but a happy land. Mm -hmm. So we moved through the darkness. And he was encouraging me, talking to me. So I never got bored mm -hmm. because, and also the speed is so fast. Mm -hmm. And then his word was very practical. Whatever he said happened. Mm -hmm. And I came to realize it is only here on earth that Christians take the word of God Lightly. just like that. Lightly. Yeah. Lightly. Mm -hmm. And that I can read this and then uh, cross and... Mm. But and then the, some in, of them sleep with Bibles on their heads. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But let me tell you, mm. that this one, this mm. which is written, mm. it is not the word of God. Yeah, it is the Bible, but the Holy Bible is inside the heart. Mm. That mm. is what you carry. Mm. Yeah, that so is you, what you carry. You have to get it, it, it not from here. here and keep it here. In here. Keep it here. Yes. This mm. is what, that is Holy Bible. The Holy Bible is in the heart. It mm. is not in the Because culture. we are the temples. Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to a Christian who waits for Sunday to open a Bible and to pray. And actually not open the Bible because they are reading for themselves, but because a pastor is reading for them. That's a mm. very poor person. Mm. A very poor person. Mm. Spiritually, that person mm. is poor if not dead. Mm. <laughs> They're living dead. What were you about to say? Mm. You were about to say something. What were you about to say? Before she asked you, okay, uh, okay, I was saying through this, the, through that, what he he said mm. always became practical. Yes, and uh, uh, I was saying it's only that we Christians take the word of God rightly, mm. but the word of God is very practical. For mm. whatever he says, mm. it must happen. And that is why those that know the secret of the word of God, mm -hmm. they use it. And if they do, 
Mm. It works. Yes. It works. It works. True. It mm. works. Mm. So when we now we came to the end of the dark sphere and we thought we we have now reached the end of dark sphere. Immediately by saying so, dark sphere was no more. And uh, I saw right. But mm. now that is I can say that is right because this is right but and that also was right. right. But the right I saw I was comforted and I felt rested. Mm. Do you hear somebody being told rest in peace? When mm. you see that right, you rest. Mm. You don't want to be told to rest. Mm. rest. So I felt I have rested. Mm. By just seeing the right. But it was uh, to some distance, so we had to move from where we are to reach that point. Mm. So when we approached the place where the right was coming from, it was a, 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 a home or a city with a big wall, very beautiful wall. And the gate was opened because we were going, so we were waited. Mm. Wow. So when I went in, what I noticed immediately by stepping in, I changed into a three-year-old girl, a young girl. Mm. Younger than yeah, the now. child. Wow. I changed and became a young girl, mm. like a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I saw was a very big seat. Yeah, we can see it's a chair, but a ch that's a seat. It's mm. not a chair. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It like a, a throne seat. and it was very big mm. now when we were coming i was not asking so many questions but when i reached there because now i have turned into a kid i started to ask questions mm. and i can't know the number of questions i asked because it was like a million questions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this guy never got tired he was very ready to explain because everything was a mystery so mm. I asked, is this a chair? No. That's a seat. Can I cry? No. Why? Can I touch? Yes, touch. <laughs> so, so is this gold? Yes, this is gold. Can I? Yes, touch. So I, I, I felt excited <laughs> and I started. So we, we say, in other words, kiherehere. I, I think I had that kihere because I was so much excited at that. I wanted to touch everything, to ask oh, about everything. Yeah, the, like, no, I don't know if it's nosy or it's like just anxious to touch. Which one now? Which one? There's so many things exciting. And very nice. No, so nice. So which one now? So mm. I asked him. Now I have seen the bottom of the seat because it, it had stairs. Mm. And I wanted to go up there. Now... Let me first explain about the stairs. Because these stairs, the color was pure, not white. That is not white. Mm. That is pure. That is the only word I can give that. It was pure, mm. not white. Mm. Nothing like that upon the earth. So I, I, I asked him, can I cry? He said, no. That seat cannot allow you to cry upon it because it is a throne. It is only the owner that can go up that seat, that throne. And asked, and now he teased me and told mm. me, can you try? Yeah. So I had to <laughs> lift the, the, the rig and, uh, and see these are the stairs. Mm. So it's only to step. Mm. So he teased me and asked me, can you just try to, to cry and see? So I, I, I just lifted the small egg mm. to see whether I can cry. Now the stairs lifted themselves. They lifted so above me. So mm. meaning, you there's no way cry. I can cry. Mm. So by the sides of these stairs, there's rails of gold. Gold to the side, the gold on the other side. Around here, there are mysteries I cannot be able to explain where the seat is now. Like the way now, this is the carpet, this is the shell. Mm -hmm. What is below the seat? I can't now. I don't have what to explain the beauty and the mystery. And all that surrounds that seat. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm so excited, I asked. And now you have told me it has got an owner. Where is the owner I, that I can go and ask him for permission and tell him to come and tell these stairs <laughs> to drop? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my yeah, because I'm feeling I have to go there. No, he just pointed on my left. To that is the owner. He was a bit far, a mm. man of about thirties. He was in the middle of thirties there, and uh, the person was in a a pure white gown, and he had a very nice hair. But he could not look at me because he was crying. Mm -hmm. And now I was feeling tempted to go and touch the hair just mm -hmm. to do it like this. Mm -hmm. I feel tempted <laughs> and go and uh, ask him, Can I cry? Mm -hmm. On your throne? Mm -hmm. But now he was crying. So I felt pity for him. But now there are so other many things to do, so you just cry, <laughs> and I continue to do what and uh, experience and uh, experiment. So the flowers, they are alive, they are happy. The flowers are happy. The trees. These that are surrounding here, they are funny, mm. and mm. they are mysteries. Mm. So you are crying. When you f you finish crying, mm. uh, you will come. And uh, around, we speak, are uh, you around me too? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. But now I'm doing some other things. But all of a sudden, when doing things here, I had a thundering voice. That voice, there is nothing that can thunder. Okay, I'm using this because I got no words to say. I got no enough words to say. Mm. Because no sounds combined. Not even the thunders that, and the, the storms that we hear when thundering. That voice was so loud that when it spoke, it left some echo. Mm. And mm. Uh, trembling and uh, everything kept quiet. Mm. Somebody has spoken. Mm. And the question was, and uh, why is this throne? Where is the owner of this throne? Why is he not sitting upon this throne? All of a sudden, some two people came. They had turbans on their head and now white gowns. And they said, he is still crying. I didn't see the one who have spoken. Mm -hmm. These people, they are speaking here. But the sound, I, I don't know where it came from. And mm -hmm. they have answered, he is still crying. So they were told, go and tell him to stop crying and come and sit on his throne. Like a flash of second, they were there. There, it's, there's no moving, there's no walking there, it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> they moved. Mm. They, they told him, one stood on the right and the one on the left and said, you were told that you stop crying. When they said that, that person cried. Until now, even me who was so busy, I had no peace. Mm -hmm. Everything now, this this cry, this cry was so disturbing, so disturbing. So everybody now got concerned. Mm -hmm. Now, I stood there and looked down. I thought. This place is so good. This throne is so good. And the light, another thing, this light has got no source. No mm. source. No sun, no ram, mm. no moon, nothing. It's but the light. the light is all over. Mm. Now I wondered, what could be disturbing this person? Can't he be contented with this place? Mm. Now why is he crying? Mm. I stood there like somebody who is thinking. But upon when I was looking down like this, I felt power and something that I can't be able to explain. Mm. And the one, now the, the, this person whom we had come with, he had set me free. He told me, can you look up? I looked up. Now from wherever, because I can't explain from where. Mm. I saw a person walking, someone in form of a man, but around his face was a light, so you could not see his light, his face. Mm. And he had a gown that was shining like sun. Mm. You see, like 
the way the, the, the way priests put on their gown and there is something like scarf, like this one of mine. <laughs> he had all of them they were shiny. But the person you can't look at him twice. Mm. He's fearful awesome. He has not spoken to me, but I am trembling. Mm -hmm. He stepped in one, two, the third step. Everything, me, my friend, the two people, and anything that was on his way was dispersed. Things were moving. Mm -hmm. His way was being moved by power. Mm -hmm. by power. Me and my friend, we were pushed like 100 meters <laughs> higher. These two men, they were pushed up like 10, you see a 10, 10, 10 story building, 10 floors are up. Because wow. when I looked at them, so we were dispersed. I see we were, we were scattered. Mm. <laughs> Those were on the mm. side. We, we were at, at our side. Now, he did I looked at them. And they, were, they were on mm. a balcony somewhere looking down. This person going majestically and he was not in a hurry. Mm. He came, he came, he came. No talk to anybody. He was not talking to anybody. He came down. We were trembling. We were trembling. And now I was looking down and asked my friend, who is that? And he told me, he is called God the Almighty. In his way, there is nothing that can stand in his way or wait for him. He cannot be going to west and you are going on your way to east and you pass here. Mm. You, you see the way the, 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 the traffic goes mm. this way and the other. No, not God. When he is going this way, everything has gone to get out mm. he go his way wherever he's going mm. and then you go your way after mm. he's done mm. Mm. so i i'm so fearly so so fear i was trembling this person also he he, he was so so fearly you see that person is like the way the is boss it, comes and now you don't know what next is it fear or respect no, mm. you can't. Yeah, the, bo the way the boss gets into your presence, and, uh, and, and mm. you feel mm. you don't know how, what he's going to say. Reverence. Mm. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 That's the word. Reverence. Ah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, I get there. He went majestically and went to where this person was crying. And I asked the past this friend of mine, and who is that he's going to? He told me. Is his son, it is his son. You see? Mm. So he went there, they started talking, but I could not hear. So now, heaven is busy, they are talking. Now, I get into my business mm. on my right hand side, from a distance, but not very far. I had some kind of jubilation. People are so happy, singing, dancing, sharing. It's like the way when there's World Cup and a goal is won. Mm. So because they were saying, hey, sharing, sharing. And mm. then you hear they are singing some, singing some, shouting some. It was somewhere that it's like you can't explain the joy that was there. Mm. And I asked the person, where's there? And uh, why have you not taken me there? He told me that is city of God. It is called the city of God. And there, there is always joy and happiness. And like now, there must be something that has happened that is bringing glory to the Almighty. That is why they are so happy. There must be something peculiar that has happened. And I asked him, can you take me there? Now, I'm not concerned with those people. They are talking about father and son. Let them talk. So can I be taken there? Mm -hmm. So the guy told me no. I asked him why. He told me I'm not allowed to take you there, so I cannot take the, you there if I am not given permission. So wait. Okay. On my left hand side, also from a distance, I had somewhere like a workshop, and people were busy, like a, a very busy press 
streets, people were, there were some like those of a hammer or something. And I asked him, huh? now the site people are singing, our site people are building, what is there? Mm. And he told me, that is called God's workshop. There are so many homes that are being built there. Some are already finished, some are being started on the foundation, and some, there are some fixations, there are pavements that are being made. So the place is so busy, and uh, it is a very beautiful place, and when the, 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 the construction will be over, that place will be a very beautiful place. And I told him, now, because the, the work is ongoing, can we go and just see? And he told me, no. Why now? Because I am not around. If I will be around, given permission, I will take you there. Now I felt, now this person, he don't want to take me around. And uh, these people are, are talking. And, uh, now I have seen, I want to see more. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, something happened that I came to hear what the father and the son are saying. And I heard him ask him. And now the father asked the son, have you ever asked me something and I denied you? He said, no. Have you ever requested me anything and I denied you? He said, no. Do you know I love you? Yes. Now, your request granted. Now, the son faced me. And he was so radiant and he was so happy. Wow. So happy. But he didn't talk to me. Now the father read him, and they came towards the throne. But remember, we were far, a bit far, so we are not near him. But by mystery, I heard what they were saying. Because now, he, 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 he patted him like this and said, your request granted. So they started, go and sit upon your phone. So, and he read him. They came. When they reached at the point of, uh, at the bottom of the, the, the throne, those stairs that lifted themselves up, they dropped by themselves mm -hmm. and they started going up. Mm -hmm. The father went and I couldn't see him. I never knew where he went because you cannot even be able to look at him. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you are asking, when will he just get out of? Because you don't want, power. yeah, because of the power. Mm. You you don't want so many things to do. <laughs> now, mm. at this point when the son was crying, this cry, he was saying, what about my work? Hold what on. about the souls it's not of men? about the son crying, but mm. the reason as to why we are comfortable with Jesus is because we can easily relate with him. He became man. Yeah. He mm. he put on flesh. Yeah. So it is easier for man yeah. to relate with him yes. than to relate with we, God, because mm. oh, they are the same. God mm. the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. But Jesus turned. He 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 lowered himself, mm. and he he so that he can relate with us. Also, mm. you done so good mm. to tell to 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 quote that because I want to tell the audience. God is a no-nonsense person. Mm. He is a no-nonsense person. It's not a person that you can approach like that. Mm. He's so awesome. So Jesus is the mediator. Yeah. Mm. He's, Jesus is the only mediator. Mm. So now, and you see, he now can smile at me. No one can come. To the Father, except through yes, Jesus. Mm. It's true. He's the way. It's very true. Mm. God is not no a no nonsense person. Let me say. If you don't have Jesus, <laughs> who, who? you can't have access to God. <laughs> you can't. Mm. And he said, you "Did you see me? You, you have, have seen, seen the, the Father. One. You have seen the Father. Yeah. You have seen the Father. <laughs> you can imagine. The Father has. You can't even face. But now Jesus faced me and laughed. He Who's smiled. <laughs> So now he's the, he's the representation of the Father. He's the mm. manifestation of the Father in mm. Yash. <laughs> yeah. mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, if God had a human body, that's Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> mm. So, he came. The Father vanished. And now, son started to go up the throne. Mm. Going up the throne, 
There, when he was crying, he was crying. He was asking, "What about my work? What about the souls of men?" Mm-hmm. So now, he, his request is granted, and he has now smiled at me, and he has agreed because he had refused. You can see he had refused to sit on his throne, mm-hmm. to go down. And once he go down, his clothes changes and becomes a gown. Mm-hmm. Now, because he is satisfied and his grant is his request is granted, he has started to go up and climb upon his throne. Mm-hmm. The way each step he stepped, his clothes changed. Mm-hmm. It changed. They changed. Up to he, to the time he reached there up. Mm-hmm. Now he also had this car. I don't know what happened, but. Mm-hmm. And I de- never saw any clothes come, but the clothes stayed by themselves. Mm-hmm. When he got up there, he, as he was preparing to sit, the place of sitting now, mm-hmm. like here, you know, we bed that we may sit. Mm-hmm. Before he could sit, a kingly crown mm-hmm. fixed itself. I don't know where it came from. It fixed itself on his head. Mm-hmm. Upon now sitting, finishing sitting, stars made a bow <laughs> and surrounded him, wow. and they started to do like this. You see, a star is a symbol of destiny, mm-hmm. and now we all have stars. But you see, the day he was born, there mm-hmm. is a manifestation that took place. There was a star yeah, was that it. was shining very bright. Mm-hmm. Ha, oh my goodness! And, and they, they were changing. Name. Yeah, you see. They oh were God, glory! Mm-hmm. All our stars around him. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Twinkling, twinkling, changing. Mm-hmm. He smiled at me. Mm-hmm. Now, my friend looked at me. Hey, hey, we go. And I was so excited. We start with the city of God. Mm-hmm. He told me, no, we are going back to the earth. <laughs> Since the, the time <laughs> he came for me, mm-hmm. up to that point. That is the only time that I disagreed with him. Mm-hmm. I told him, no. Not going back. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, no, you are going back. I said, no, I'm not going back. <laughs> How can I go back? I'm not going back. <laughs> hey, now, it's like... I also had the same experience. And I said, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. And <laughs> I was very tough. Mm-hmm. You see, and I'm now like a kid, but I'm very tough. And I, I, I had not disagreed anywhere, mm-hmm. but at that point, I disagreed, mm-hmm. and I became tough. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he told me, oh, my now, <laughs> you have to go. <laughs> Did you hear what the son was saying when he was crying? He said, what about my work? What about the souls of men? So you have to go and work. You have to go and win souls for Jesus because Mm. you saw he had gone down from his throne Mm. to cry that you may go back and win souls for men, souls of men for him. So you have to go. He will not Mm. come back down again to Mm. cry. He's not going to cry again. So you have to go down. Now, we started to negotiate. Mm. They are down. We left pastors. They are bishops. Mm. They are prophets. There are so many believers. Please, go and appoint them. Tell them to do that work. Please. Now I'm begging. Mm. And I have started crying. He told me, no. I said, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. Now he told me, can you look at the right side? That is when I saw a mystery that I never knew. I saw a, a stand. These churches like Catholics, they are ram stands where they press candles. Mm. There was a ram stand and a candle upon it. And it was burning. And he was very tough, he told me. Can you look at that? That is your life. And it is burning. And you can see how much it has burned and the extent and uh, and, uh, the remaining part. You can stay here. That is your life. You can stay here when your life is not burnt up. So go back and not going back. It is now withdrawing me, mm. checking me up. Bio, bio. 
<laughs> out. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> uh. I went climb. Ah, uh, through the same door. That the mm. same way you came is the same way you left. Mm. <laughs> now very fast. Mm. <laughs> Zooming speed. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> I was crying, but no one was minding. Mm. I came, and uh, he, he said, we are now entering into the dark sphere, but we are going through the light of life. Mm. The highway formed. Through the light of life. Yes, mm. it's the light of life. Mm. The highway formed. When I entered the dark sphere, I, I was stranded. Because I was very scared. Yeah, first thing that comes is fear. And uh, I, I just uh, remember the scripture that said that those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I started screaming the name Jesus. And as I screamed the name Jesus, light appeared. And that light transported me yeah. also to heaven. He's the light. He's the light. It's no doubt. He is the light. And this word is not fantasies. This mm. is not fantasies. Mm. If you read this word, it is a lie. Even David says, I, though I walk through the shadow of the, the valley of the death. shadow of death. Yeah. Yes, I will mm. fear no evil. Yeah, and that is what he quoted. Mm. That is what he quoted. Psalms 23 verse 4. Mm. That though I walk through the shadow of death, mm. I will not fear no I will fear, fear no, no evil, evil. Mm. evil because you are with me. So we moved and came. But he was trying to speak to me, encouraging me. But this time round, I was giving mono answers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Have you heard that you were going back to work? Mm. I, I, uh, and are you going to work? Mm. So we moved through the dark sphere. And uh, he said, now we have come to the other end of the dark sphere. Now we are entering the earth sphere. When I saw the light of, now the, 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 the now, atmosphere. I explain, from the dark sphere to the earth sphere, what, for me what I saw, it was something like a thick cloud, like a, a blanket. Yeah. Something mm. you can't is, easily mm. penetrate through. That mm. is protecting those beings from, yeah. from the from the dark side from coming from into preventing yes yeah, yeah the, mm. the areas the yes. areas they are the areas separating yes. so those beings in mm. the second heaven cannot pass yeah. into yeah. the earth and they are craving to come and they are destroy so wicked humanity they are so mm. wicked you hear he said a heavenly being saying they are hooligans mm. how how wicked do you think they are they are so wicked mm. so i so now we are entering for sure and uh, with a lot of pain that I can't explain, I asked him. So you were sure, and you were so serious, you were taking me back there? He said, yes. I have no option. I have to obey orders. I don't know how to disobey. My nature is to obey. I was sent to take you, and now I am sent to save you back. And I, I don't know how. Disobedience is not in me. Mm. So we came. Supersonic speed. Mm. Now I'm not even interested with the features. Mm. We came. I can remember what I noticed and uh, I realized for sure now we are in Kenya. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I saw a, a tea plantation. Mm. A very big tea plantation in people's homes. So I know this guy, he had not an impact. So we came up to the top of the house that I was living in. Mm. Now there, we had some conversation before we started. Mm. He told me, now, that city, you will come back. You are not chased. You are a citizen there. But now there are conditions. You have to persevere pain because you will go through a rope of pain from now. Another thing, you will not be living a normal life like other people. The way now you see a woman gets, gets children, you are praying, you do what, you do what. Your life is now, one thing is going to be unstructured. See, be structured, I don't know. 
like things like can the, change at any yeah, time yeah mm. it's a lot of changes that are going to happen in your life mm. another thing you don't owe anything when you were there you you saw you were a young kid so you should not hold anything close because there's nothing that it belongs to you are just given a time to take care of and if it is taken you don't have to question another thing you are going to be tested there are those things that will be brought to you and you will see them and then they will be taken away that you may be tested and be seen mm-hmm. whether you are holding anything closer such that you can forget what has brought you mm-hmm. back here so there will be no life of comfort will be going sometimes you will be seeing like things are going so good. but any time you forget what has brought you here it will be taken mm-hmm. so I told him and uh, can I be assisted to finish this work fast that mm. I may go back he told me no one thing you are going to face a lot of resistance mm. a lot it won't be any easy now it is the time that things are going to be very very tough now you will have to persevere take this and never forget persevere pain because you're going to face pain mm. so he told me now i stand here that you may go back and take what you had dropped because when i was going when he called me i felt i have dropped something like you know as i saw say so say so bags the old say so bags mm-hmm. yes we call them gunia za makonge the uh-huh. size of the size of bags yeah 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 so when i was going i felt i have dropped like a size of size of mm. bag wet mm. so he told me there's something that you dropped so i stand here you go back and pick it that i may go so i and i say when i pick it can i come he say no you won't be able to come so i buy i buy him food mm. i entered through the roof and i went to pick what i had dropped because he pointed what i dropped mm. when i picked so it is my body that I had dropped there mm. <laughs> like a sack of potatoes uh, it's like <laughs> when jesus resurrected mm. and the disciples had locked themselves and they never wanted to come out because of fear He just showed up in the room. Yeah. He didn't mm. knock. He showed up. And it is very easy. Yeah. yeah. This very body, easy. This body it limits us. its limitations. It it do limit us. Mm. Let me tell you, it is it it, it it it's so limiting. Mm. Actually sometimes you feel to hate the body. Mm. Because it even makes you not to see what is happening around in the world. actual world. Mm-hmm. In the actual world. Imagine with those few moments of getting out you are able to see even the the city in america that you wanted to to, to go to <laughs> here you must ask for a visa <laughs> pay for a, a ticket <laughs> yeah. go through a long process uh, a long process mm. last you look in your bank account whether you have <laughs> but now i was taken to new york i saw new york full of charge <laughs> i went to, to the space where the nasa takes a lot of money to go to round rock and to do what i went there mm. so the body limits us and sometimes you feel to hate the body Another thing I looked at what makes us so busy that we can't remember God it is vanity mm. I'm saying it's vanity mm. oh. vanity and that's why they are trying to use technology to try to to distract make, yes and to distract. and to make the body comfortable because if you're able to do things that your body our body's desires to move fast mm. it desires to mm. do things fast to get things done quickly so with technology they try to they try to copy the things in the spiritual realm and bring them to us but still you cannot compare there is a kind of technology that god has that mm. only belongs to him and i don't know whether technology means or where they got this 
but mm. even the speed mm. i don't know satan satan was in the kingdom of god before he was in heaven so he knows he has some knowledge mm-hmm. of how things happen in the spiritual realm exactly and he tries to deceive people with those few things you know if you bow down and worship me i'll give you this i'll give you that i'll show you how to use this you will mm. be the, the the greatest man in the whole world you come up, you invent something that the world desires to have you know all those gimmicks we know them but we are not ready to sell our souls and if you're watching this program you have not given your life to Christ it's high time you think about it yeah mm-hmm. it's true because if i may say this body is like a cover you see a tablet like your tablet has got a cover mm. Mm. this cover can be sold by hookers around mm. Mm. but this one the shops that has this one mm. they has soldiers grills mm. cctv mm. and the sensors mm. because yes. it is something precious yeah what is inside your body mm. is what is precious yeah can you imagine and ask yourself why today there is this saying that young people and even not only young people i have seen it even in facebook people are being initiated into devil worshiping mm. you are told no blood sacrifice no human sacrifice only you are so what is that soul mm. what is that soul he don't want anything he just want you are so why mm. and when he has your soul he will make you to shed blood he will make you to to do his assignment because the soul has the will the emotion the mind and the intellect, soul is you mm. yes. soul the is you. you yes the real you yeah. mm. and that is why jesus christ can just step down if he hear or even think that there is a soul that is going to perish mm. he do steps down even he comes mm. down from the throne mm. Mm. and i came to know that he values the souls of men more than anything else the mm. bible says he leaves the 91 to look for the one, one. Mm. one. it is very precious mm. very very precious but now i don't know why, how we shall educate especially the believers to know the price of souls of men mm-hmm. forget this gimmicks of collecting tithes and offerings yeah and i don't things. know what we are going to do to the church let us concentrate on winning souls into the kingdom the money will come everything will come seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the things shall be added yeah yeah there shall be a bonus money will be a bonus things will be added unto us and and there are people in the kingdom that god has appointed to support the work of god they just see the work of god taking place and they just want to be a part of it even without us creating things like anointing Gimmicks oil or holy water yeah. to sell holy, holy water, water to holy sell this. Yeah. oh my goodness you don't need to do any gimmicks this is what disappoints me when i see false prophets you know people who started well in god and then they run into a bit of difficulty and they start coming up with schemes of how to fleece the sheep jesus said feed my sheep not fleece my sheep <laughs> So you are supposed to be coming up with ways to be a blessing to the Lord's people. Mm. Teach them God's word. Jesus said the seed is the word of God. That's in Luke, the seed is the word of God. Seed is not money. It was never money. Is the word of God and once it comes into your spirit, once it comes in there, it begins to grow and then it shows up in your life. That is the kingdom system. So all of these gimmicks that we're seeing around, let's get back to the basics let's get back to what jesus wants let's bring in souls and all of these gimmicks are sending away souls yeah. that's the problem mm. the false prophet the whole the whole false prophetic movement can i prophesy and all this falsehood mm. that just glorifies the prophet and yes. makes him look big mm. but what about the souls of man why aren't you teaching them the principles of the kingdom of god you're teaching them false principles you're teaching them to give you money so that they can flourish meanwhile they give and it does not work so they become worn out they become tired they begin to say the things of god don't work it's not that the things of god don't work it's the 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 false principles of these so called false prophets that are wearing out the saints mm. yeah you know it makes more sense if i gave to the church out of my heart 
out of will. You know, I feel like God has blessed me and I can be a blessing to the ministry without being forced and persuaded and threatened and mm. you know all those things that they do if you do not give you have robbed you were a or, robber you have or, sinned. or or comparing the amount of money that you gave to how much you love god mm-hmm. those are not related jesus said if you love me keep my commandments mm-hmm. not give a seed if you love yeah. me must besides the seed is the word of god it is not money there are so many the, seeds now mm. yes, yes. So another, another thing that is a bit painful mm. but uh, in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Jesus Christ, it is not bad to build churches. It is not bad to fundraising. You are targeting 10 million mm. Kenyan shillings or dollars or whatever. But how many souls are you targeting to win for Christ? Mm. How many? You see, mm. the churches were closed. Yeah, because soon mm. you people, you're going to build big churches. Mm. But there will be no one to come there. Recently, the churches were closed. Were closed. Yeah. The people that were locked out, were they built? You build. Or did you build the building? Yeah. Mm. You, know? You, you, you know, even that's Corona, the pandemic. It was just one of those spirits mm. that was conjured to come from the, that, that kingdom of darkness to come and create havoc on earth. Yeah. Now the spirits that are coming are even worse than the one. So Does if if one corona one? alone was able to close the churches, mm. then what else is coming? Mm. So you, you can build the largest structure. You can have the biggest coliseum. But how many souls? Because one day those structures will be closed. That is Ooh. definite. Yeah. Be, if just corona can close them, and there are worse demo, devils coming. Facebook, social media is censoring the, the, mm. the messages. You know, true messages are being censored. Now, if all those things that we are holding are going to shut, do we still have any Christians? Do mm. we still have a church? Can you preach without taking an offering? Uh-huh. Can you preach without taking seed? Can you preach without taking anything? Just tell them, just preach the gospel, win souls, and don't ask for anything. And let I, God provide. You go to yeah, a church because service. gospel is power. Yeah. yeah. You go to gospel a church service, power. you mm. find many offerings. Love offering, sacrificial offering, Mm -hmm. lamb offering, thanksgiving offering, Mm -hmm. tithe offering, uh, faith offering, all the offerings, building offering. They have turned into religious pyramid schemes. But this is about souls. It's about souls. It's about preparing them for that place. It's about teaching souls how to make heavenly investments during your lifetime. If you are earning, if you are earning money. Wisdom, if there's anything wisdom will teach you, is how to make investments in God during this yes. lifetime so that you can find them waiting for you. Yeah. She, w- she spoke about God's workshop. That's people's homes being built. Every time a soul is being won, every time you are contribute, you're giving to the poor, especially giving to the poor in the name of the Lord mm. and telling them, Jesus sent me to take care of you, to help you, to help lift you up. You are sending materials for the building of your home, mm. of your mansion, of your residence in heaven. heaven. You're investing in eternal treasures. Mm. So that, that, is, that is the prime. And the Lord said that the primary way to honor him with your resources is to give to, to the, the poor. poor. Yes. Give to the less fortunate. By giving to the poor, we were able to start a ministry. Yeah. These people that we were giving were not even born again. They were into witchcraft. They were into, uh, the, the, some of them were Muslims. Others were Catholics. But as we were giving to them, we said, it's Jesus who has told us to give to them. Mm. And they said, well, if we accept that Jesus, where can we where can we fellowship and worship that yes. Jesus? We don't have a church in this area. Win them fast. Yes. Mm. You win them fast. Uh, yes. Bring them in fast. Mm. And that's how we were able to build a church. And now we have about 900, 700 people fellowshipping mm. and worshiping. In a place, people. in a village where there was no church because there's poor villagers there. Mm-hmm. So... Nobody wants to build a church in, in, a the, in the place in fact, where pe- poor were people are. Us, they were like, oh, how can you put such a big tent and, 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 and good um, uh, sound equipment in a village? Where mm. will you collect the tithes? I'm like, come on. Is that all you're thinking about? Tithe? Not souls? Yeah, yeah, there, there was somewhere I went for a mission. Mm. And uh, we went door to door. And that evening, I, we went to just one homestead. 25 persons got saved and 
say they desired, they have been hearing that there is gospel, they, but they have never found anybody to give them the gospel. Mm -hmm. Those people got saved that one evening, and we stayed there for one week. When I was coming back here, I compared the work in towns, mm -hmm. in urban, the urban church, mm -hmm. and there, mm -hmm. and saw that the church has gotten a case to answer before Jesus Christ. Mm. Souls are perishing, mm. but we are so much very comfortable. Mm. Why is the church very comfortable. Mm. We don't want anything to disturb us. Mm. We just want people who has got money. You mm. can't go to that Turukana person and tell him that Jesus Christ saves. Because that person may be poor, he may not have a child, mm. or he may not even have that mm. money. Mm -hmm. he, he may even be needing your help, mm -hmm. so you don't want, in fact the church don't want to get to those people who are perishing, mm -hmm. they want comfort. You know, mm -hmm. And that's why the church that is supposed to know whatever is happening before it happens is blind. Mm -hmm. Imagine they have been prophesying, they could not see COVID, they could not see Corona coming, they mm -hmm. don't even know when it's going, mm -hmm. they cannot speak. But they claim to see and to hear from God and to be the oracles and eyewitnesses and testaments of God. Can you imagine? We cannot see. The church is blind. They cannot see what is coming. And, and how safe are we if the church is not standing in its place? We are so much blinded by the things of this world, you know, oh. that we cannot, we have forgotten our assignment. And our assignment is winning souls into the kingdom. Our assignment is to worship the true living God. Mm -hmm. Our assignment is to love one another. Our assignment is to serve God. Oh my goodness. Now in Matthew chapter 24 mm -hmm. from verse 11, mm -hmm. Jesus gave us a very clear warning. He says, And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So we know that we are living in these last days, in the days when there are many false prophets. So if you suspect that even there could be a false prophet who may be influencing your life, one of the main keys is to stop the habit of following after prophets. I told a certain lady, why are you following such and such a prophet? He said, oh, he's my prophet, he's my oracle, he's my man of God. <laughs> I said, oh, this is idolatry. Because 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, There is one God and Father of us all, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So how is there another person in between you and God other than Jesus? An oracle or some kind of person that's between you and God, some kind of broker. In Christianity, there's no broker. There's nobody between you and God except Jesus Christ himself. So those are, that's the one you should be following. So and anytime you have such a broker, he's always there to collect money, mm -hmm. to collect seed, to take and your also resources, your destinies. and take your destinies also. Because now your eyes are no longer on Jesus. Your eyes are on the prophet. And men, Jesus said, many false prophets shall arise. So how will you avoid these many false prophets? Stop following prophets. Mm -hmm. Follow Jesus. And actually on this platform, we do not want to lead you to us. We want to lead you to Christ. To Christ. We're, we're pointing, our aim is to point you towards him and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So that you stop having to need us. Once we have poured out like a glass, like a vessel. Once I have poured out everything, I'm no longer needed. Mm -hmm. That's my joy. Mm -hmm. To be no longer, once we've poured out the information, you don't need us anymore. And now, follow him. Mm. Follow after Christ. And with what is happening, I don't even want titles. I rather be called by the name Erica mm. Mufisa, the name that my mother gave mm. me, that to be called prophetess, oracle, man of God, woman mm. of God, you know, prophet, uh, evangelist, mm. all those things, all those titles don't make sense if we are not doing the will of God. Yes, so deceiving. Mm. Those titles, they are so deceiving. Mm. So many people are perishing and grieving that rights because of those titles. Mm. Thinking that because I call you my prophet, you can do whatever you want mm. because you are prophet. Mm. You will perish. Mm. If you don't repent, 
if you don't live like the word of God says, you will perish with that title. Mm. Mm. Because if in heaven you turn out to be a, like a kid, mm. do you think your, your title will be anywhere found? No. <laughs> It won't be anywhere found. And in fact, the Bible says, unless you become like, like a, a child, child, you shall by no means mm. enter into the kingdom of mm. God. Mm. Just imagine. Yeah. A child is quick to believe. Mm. A child will receive it. whatever instruction the child is given, they obey. She yeah. said, the word of God says, when it comes to malice, be children. When it comes to rage, anger. When it comes to sin, be children. The child cannot sin. Mm. But when it comes to righteousness, be grown yes. adults. Mm. Mm. Wow. wow. I hope wow. you have been blessed. I just want to remind you before our brother leads you to Christ that uh, my Facebook account, Erica Belinda Ministries, was hacked. Uh, so if you've been following uh, me on that Facebook page, just kindly unfollow or you can report anyone who tries to ask for money on that page. Report that account. It, I'm no longer in control of it. And you can follow me on Erika Belinda Mukisa Kimani page or Erika Mukisa's testimony. Uh, just know that we do not ask for money for deliverance. Whether they're asking for, for money and posing to be bamboo or whoever they are, we, if you want to get information uh, concerning our ministry or charity works, you can find us on www.lifespiritual.com or www.lifespiritual.org. And uh, you can also get information about us only on this YouTube channel. We love you so much. And we hope you're learning and getting blessed through all these videos that we upload. If you want to share your videos, your, I mean your testimony on our platform, you can still contact us mm. on those numbers on the screen. We'll be gladly, uh, we would gladly welcome you and invite you. Amen. And in closing, you know, I want to share with you just a few ways of uh, making internal investments, living life from the perspective of eternity, because we are all headed there. Every day, we take one step closer to eternity. Every day. Every heartbeat is one closer to your last. So it is wisdom to invest this time in exchange for eternity. So Jesus talks about five foolish virgins and five wise ones in Matthew chapter 25. And he says from verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. So it's like Jesus is differentiating those. All of them are in the church, but five are wise and five are foolish. That's like 50% of the church wise, 50% are foolish. Mm. Verse 3, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. We are churchgoers. We are in the praise and worship team. We are worshipers. We are pastors. We are bishops. We are whatever. Lord, open for us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Then he says, Watch therefore, for you know neither day nor the hour when the Son of Man comes. You see those ones that were, they had no oil. That oil comes from a life, a lifestyle of prayer and reading the Word of God. Prayer and much time spent in the Word. Because the Bible speaks about the anointing oil. And what the anointing does is it teaches. In 1 John, the Bible says, the anointing that you have received of Him teaches you all things. 
And ye need not that any man teach you, but the anointing that you have received of him, it shall teach you all things. And as it teaches you, you shall abide in him. So this teaching, these details of the scriptures are what provides that oil and that time spent watching. Jesus said, watch, for you know not. What is the watch? First, second, and third watch. Those are, those are times spent in prayer. They that wait upon the Lord, like how she mentioned, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So that strength, that knowledge, that wisdom, that spiritual insight, it comes from spending time in the scriptures. And so if there's any material thing that we as Christians are able to manage within, or if we are able to come into possession of things, wisdom will teach you that not all these things are not ours. So you're being tested to see what are you going to do with these resources? What are you going to do with this bit of money, this little bit of power that God is giving? What are you going to do with it? So if wisdom, if you know God's word, you know that the primary way to honor God with your resources is by giving to the poor. Hmm. And we know that maybe three quarters, maybe half of the world's population is wallowing in poverty. Hmm. So we see that in the kingdom of God, one of the primary ways of winning souls is sharing your resources with the poor. Hmm. In Kenya, 40 or 50 percent of our population is wallowing in abject poverty. Oh, Meanwhile, Christians are busy sowing seeds to people, hoping for some kind of financial breakthrough. When God's word never promised you that, he told you, give to the poor. Let's, let's read a few scriptures. Proverbs That's chapter 29, said. Proverbs chapter 29, verse seven. Mm. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked regards not to know it. Yeah. And so it gives you a clear mindset as to what God considers righteousness. There was the rich man and there was uh, Lazarus in Luke chapter, I believe Luke chapter 18. In fact, let's go there quickly and read this story because we're looking at the difference between heaven and hell. And a certain ruler, Luke chapter 18, verse 18, and a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things have I kept from my youth. Jesus said, Ye lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute unto the poor. And you shall have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. This is not the story of the rich man and Lazarus. This is the story of the, the rich man, sorry. And uh, come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus told the man, go and give to the poor and come and follow me. Which pastor will you ever see? Or which man of God will you ever see talking to a rich man <laughs> and saying, <laughs> a member of take, Yeah, <laughs> member of parliament, any man in power, or telling Bill Gates, go and give away what you have to the poor and come and be saved. They'll all tell you, come and sow a, soul, a seed into my ministry. Why didn't Jesus say, sow a seed into my ministry? <laughs> Jesus had every right to do it. That was, that's Jesus. Didn't he have a right to say that? But he didn't. He said, go, sell what you have and give to the poor. Why did he say that? Jesus was teaching us. He leading by example. He's a true leader leading by example. He told him to give to the poor because Jesus knows. Proverbs 19, 17. He that has pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he has given will he give him again. Mm -hmm. So had the rich man given to the poor, to the Lord would have given him back everything that he gave, and the man would have laid up for himself treasure in, in heaven. heaven. So both on earth and in heaven, yes. the man would have been wealthy. But he missed the opportunity to become a disciple. His name would have been written on one of the, the, 12, the 12 pillars in heaven, in the New Jerusalem, mm. among the other disciples. He missed that opportunity. He missed the opportunity to lay up for himself treasure in heaven. Mm. He missed the opportunity to honor God because Proverbs 14.31 says, He that 
that despises the poor reproaches his maker, but he that honors him has mercy on the poor. So the way that you honor God with your resources is to give to the less fortunate. God had designed this strategy from a long time ago, knowing that Satan's system is a system that enriches the few at the expense of the many. So, so many are in poverty. So those are the ones that you can catch easily. You can catch them in the net if you just share your resources with them. You don't even have to do it through us. Can you, you can do it on your own. There are some prophets who, who yeah. preach that uh, when you're sowing seed, you have to look at the soil that you're sowing your seed into. You cannot sow seed to a poor man and, and, and you know, and no, cover that, your wealth. Like, that's a lie of the devil. Those are doctrines <laughs> of oh devils. God. That comes straight from hell. That doctrine comes straight from hell. God has promised, Proverbs 29, verse 14, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. You know, Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. Lord lord. So he's giving you counsel. He's telling you the king, whichever one of you children of God, whichever one of you kings and priests, whichever one of you kings faithfully judges the poor, your throne shall be established forever. Yes. And she was talking about thrones. That is your entrance. You can't, you can't step into that place unless those doors are open for you. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I just wish uh, many people can get to know all these things that we are sharing. Because I had a friend who was a secular artist coming from a, poor, a, a humble background. And he was working so hard to make it in life. And finally, he sold his soul. He thought money was everything. He got the money and he became proud. He started despising the poor people. He would uh, go to a club and say, if you do not have money, get out of here. I have money, you know. I can even beat you and buy you, you know, and <laughs> pay you. But that man died prematurely because he felt he owned, he owned the world because he had some money in his account. He landed on a, a, a person who had gone to the gym many times and that person did not spare his life. Making this guy die prematurely, he left all his wealth, the things he had sold his soul for. In fact, in one of his songs, he said, I gave my soul and conquered. He mentioned the songs he has released from the time he sold his soul. Forgetting that, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The things that we fight to get and, and you know, cheat people and do all gimmicks to get, when we die, you don't go with them. They take you six feet under. You leave everything, even your mm. precious wife. No, even, no matter how beautiful she is, somebody can even take her before they even bury you and you will not do anything. So the, the treasure we have is salvation. That is the greatest gift because you go with your salvation. You go with Jesus. You mm. go, you go. And the word of God is that weapon that will help you to overcome. And mm -hmm. also there is this thing. Mm. I would like the audience to know mm. that once the door of eternity is opened, mm. there's no turning back. Mm. And when you will look back mm. and see what has made you to lose your soul, mm. you will blame yourself all the days, mm. all the days, days without end, because mm. eternity is very serious. Mm. Eternity has no joke. Mm. There's no turning back. There's no being sorry. Thanks God whom we did that he's full of mercy and that his mercy endures forever. Once you get into that eternity without Jesus Christ, mm. he will not hear anything about you mm. because you have rejected the son. Mm. And I want to say, people have got children, but God has a son. Mm. God's son is good. Mm. Jesus is good. Mm. If you reject Jesus, oh. I want to tell you for sure, you will forever remain to blame yourself. Like that please, please, wait, wait, wait a minute. Please, you saw his face. What did he look like? Please describe him, if you can, any description of his face, his features. How did Jesus look? Jesus, without talking to you, you mm. see love. Mm. Love, he has not spoken to you. Mm. You see love, mm. compassion, mm. care. And you see, someone who can deny himself everything to give you. Mm. And, then the and he's so humble. You, he's not like, you know, we have ki kings, kids, presidents, kids, mm. 
mm. rich people's kids you sit there arrogant but jesus christ is so happy and you wonder now he mm-hmm. has all this and he's like this yeah how can you just reject someone who is so humble so gentle so good so good jesus is so good i tell you if you look at him you see love his and, facial and feature, he, his features and uh, he's so cute <laughs> that's also about, another thing i think yeah. the question is trying to ask <laughs> he's yeah. so about cute. Race. No, 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 he not really. All the races. Yeah, just his features. Like, did you see a beard? It, Maybe his eyes. No, and... he, he's he's so his face is so radiant. Mm. See his his cute, no beard. Mm. Oh no, he's but he's radiant and mm. very cute. Someone mm. so cute. You hear? I was just missing to touch the hair, <laughs> and very gentle. Mm. And someone who has nothing wicked in him. Mm. Just a lot. Just somebody so good. Yeah, and then also he is, he is a combination of all races. He's not mm. a Mzungu. He's not an African. He's yeah. not white. Mm. He's he's a com- he's in, he's in between all races. Yeah, you mm. can't. De- he's not white. Don't be lied by an anybody. He's not, not white. white. Mm. He's not white. Yes. Mm. His face is there because heaven have got its own colors. Mm. That's why I'm saying, if I am going to describe, I don't have a word for that. Mm. Like now, I, I told you the stairs. Mm. No word for those stairs mm. unless I say pure, mm. because mm. in heaven there are colors mm. that are not here. That, that, are, that not are not here, here. so mm. we can't explain his brownies, mm. but he's cute mm. <laughs> and so good. Speaking of also, Jesus, there was a certain. Yeah. Let's tell this story. Mm. Uh, Luke chapter sixteen from verse nineteen. Luke sixteen. From verse 19 and Jesus was telling this story there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day that means he was bringing in serious money every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. They have pastors, evangelists, prophets, teachers, and apostles. They have Erica, they have Beth, they have every man of God you have ever heard. They have every, all pastors, every preacher, whoever, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And here's someone who's come from that realm. He had two people out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. These are two people who have been beyond that realm of darkness into heaven and have seen that place and have heard the voices and have seen the mysteries and have seen the wonders. But God's word is teaching you that even if they come and tell you about those places, those that reject the gospel, they still won't hear. They won't believe. They won't believe. So it is a matter of the heart. There's something about the pure in heart, about the gospel. It draws the pure in heart. It's, it is a filthy, the wisdom of God has designed the gospel 
that it draws the pure in heart. Unfortunately, those who are not pure, yeah. one of they the, can't make it. That musician who initiated me, mm. the devil used to initiate me in the kingdom of darkness, recently uh, confessed that he's dying soon and he also uh, he's ready to, to pay a funeral service while he's alive to mm. prepare for his uh, burial while he's alive and tell them the kind of way he wants to be buried mm. a kind of coffin it has to be a glass coffin so that people from all over the world can easily see him in a glass coffin and all that you know but before when i was telling people about this gentleman selling his soul to the devil they thought i was lying and i told you that these people who sell their souls to the devil are given a time limit the devil tells them when their expiry date is mm. and they know when they are going to die like i knew i was going to die at 40. so mm. even me at 40 i would be now telling the funeral service guys to prepare my glass coffin and, mm -hmm. and all that but now with jesus at 40 i'm preparing now to mm. maybe have another baby mm -hmm. and all, you know all that yeah. because yeah. i know i love i have i have life in yes. christ in christ mm. you know jesus is everything he can give you wealth here in this world and he can give you wealth even after this world. What mm. does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I'm praying for him. If he's willing to give his life to Christ, he will survive that death penalty. He's, if he's willing to get rid of those covenants that he entered into, he can escape. Jesus is the only way for him to escape. So now it is between him. But now it gets to a point where you go deeper beyond redemption. The things they do, blaspheming God and all that, they go very deep beyond redemption. Mm. But I thank God for the blood of Jesus. If you're watching this video and you have not made up your mind, please, I request you to give your life to Christ. Watch this. The, the rich man and the beggar, the rich man and Lazarus, it demonstrates what is taking place all over the world because profound injustices are taking place all over the world while we speak and God is judging this injustice. So this rich man who had everything, he refused to share with Lazarus and God judged it. And now, even in hell, this rich man is still the same. He's not changed. You see, when you come out of your body, when your soul comes out, don't think that you're going to change into another person. If you were a fornicator when you died, you'll still be a fornicator when you come out. If you were an adulterer when you passed, you'll still be the same. If you were a liar, you see, whatever you were that you were unrepentant of, that you did not repent, that is what you'll come out of your body being. And when you enter into the spirit realm, a liar is a liar, fornicator is a fornicator. There's nobody who tries to, who, who appears like something else, but they are, the, no, 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 you are what you are. That's why the scripture says, no adulterer, no fornicator, no liars, no, no, no uh, he that loves it and maketh a lie that comes out of his mouth, no murderers, no wrath, seditious, ra envious people shall enter into the kingdom of God. None of those people will enter into that place. So it's important that you change now while you are in the realm of time, because in the realm of time, things can change. But in the realm of eternity, nothing changes. It's the same. Okay? So, so when you see that the rich man fell into hell, it was the fulfillment of Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13. Whoso stops his ear at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry, but shall not be heard. So Proverbs 14, 20, I mean Proverbs 21, 13 was just was being fulfilled. We're, we're seeing it in math in Luke chapter 6. 16 verse 19 so the word of god is true it does not conflict itself it does not contradict itself and is full full of wisdom watch this in in jeremiah chapter uh, 16 verse 19 or oh, 22 verse 16 sorry jeremiah chapter 22 verse 16 it's one of the most beautiful scriptures in this in this matter of justice of sharing what you have with others. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Now as Jeremiah 22, 16, it says, he judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, says the Lord? Imagine that. 
judge the cause of the poor and needy, then it is well with you. Is not this to know me, says the Lord? That's what it is to, to know God. So really, our churches should be distribution places, hmm. places of distribution, not collection places, but dis distribution places where, where you uh, distribute mercy, mercy where you demonstrate the love of God, you share resources, you share, you never, you don't hold and hoard anything for yourself, but you share because you're confident that the God who told you to share is able to replace it. Hmm. And that's what we saw in the early church. The Bible says that the saints, they gathered, they sold whatsoever they had, and they gathered and put their things at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't stop there. The apostles did not go and buy mansions and private jets. Mm -hmm. What the apostles did was, and distribution was made to whoever had need, and none had any lack. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. So, what has church become over these past 2,000 years? Instead of being a place where people gather things and distribute, it has become a place of gathering for yourself. Yeah, like so beware. a situation where a church should be having law firms repre representing people who have been, uh, you know, treated un unjustly in, in society at an affordable price, or if possible, without any price. Mm. Uh, having hospitals where people can easily access medication they uh, also having schools where widows can take the orphans to study for free, you know, with bursaries, things like that, that will make people's lives better. You know, situations where we have farms and people can feed the hungry, can be fed, you know, we supply food, distribute food to the hungry. That's, those are the things. A rescue that, place. Yes. Mm. That the poor. Yeah, mm. having shelter where the homeless can go and sleep. You know, without minding about the rain falling on them, the sun rays hitting them and all that. Really, church, we need to wake up. And God is calling us to do all this because the times we are in are so bad, so dangerous. People have lost businesses. People have lost their beloved ones. Children have been turned into orphans. And this is the time when the church has to do something. We are waiting for the government. But the government also is waiting for the church. For the church. They are waiting for us. And what are we doing, church? Mm. We need to wake up. Because we cannot be greedy in church. Mm. There is also the government be greedy. Mm. Who is who now? Yes. Who show the other the way? A member of parliament and embezzles funds and then he brings 10% to the pastor, to the yes, bishop. And the, the archbishop receives the 10% mm. in form of tithes and, and sings songs of praise mm. to the member of parliament. And, and, and really? no calling for, for salvation. Mm -hmm. No one is being called for salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just pray. Mm. Pray. And no and preaching that about time, sin. Even if you just went and you did whatever you did, just bring 10%. Mm. Smuggle mm. drugs, bring 10%. Going to prostitution, bring 10%. Yes. Mm. You know, embezzle funds, bring 10%. Really, mm. what has yeah, the church done? public standing? funds and bring tight. Mm. Mm. And we are comfortable. Jesus Christ is crying. Mm. And you that see, is for sure. Jesus Christ is crying for the church. Because we are not the way he wants the church to be. Mm. We are not winning the souls. We are not reading what he showed us to read as an example. Actually, the worldness in, in the church is too much that it is suffocating the church. Mm -hmm. So we see that some day communities are funding church projects. Mm -hmm. They are funding their radio stations, they are funding their TV stations, they are funding them, and they are promoting homosexuality in the church. You find some choir leader, he's gay, and you can't talk about him. Because they are the funders. Mm. They'll tell you that's hate speech. That's hate speech. Because you're telling a gay guy to stop being gay, to, to repent of his sin. That's not hate speech. That's love. You're telling him there's a place that you cannot enter unless you're pure, unless you're holy. Oh, my so it is a law. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27, the Bible gives you a very clear law. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor shall not lack, but he that hides his eyes shall have many a curse. So there are even Christians, can you imagine? Because the word of God cannot be changed. There's even Christians who can bring curses upon themselves 
when you look at the poor and you despise them. Mm -hmm. And on your, you're on your way to church to give big tithes and offerings and sow seeds, but this less fortunate one, you can't help them. And you, dis and you look upon them and you despise them. Meanwhile, the Bible says, he that despises the poor reproaches his maker. And who's his maker? God. So every time you see the poor, you must see an opportunity to honor God, to lend to God, to sow uh, and, and lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, and a long list of powerful promises in Psalms chapter 41. And, all, and while you are doing this, you are preparing, you are laying up for yourself treasure in heaven, which is exactly what Jesus said to do. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And we'll, 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 we'll get to that scripture. But let's look at Psalms chapter 41. Very powerful, very powerful. Psalms chapter 41. From verse 1. So, the Bible says, Blessed is he that considers the poor. I want you to count how many blessings, all right? Count these blessings, eh? these promises. Blessed is he that considers the poor. Okay, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. One. One. Uh -huh. The Lord will preserve him. Two. And keep him alive. Three. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. Four. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Five. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Six. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Seven. Seven. There are Christians who are sick in their body, but they can't give to the poor. Mm. Mm. Meanwhile, giving to the poor is directly connected to your health. And yet giving to the poor is not being taught in churches. How crucial it is to give to the less fortunate. It's not being taught. You and people are going to Christian. hell because of this thing. You want to know a true Christian, look at their workers. The people that, that help them actually do work in the house. If you, if you see their hair untidy, you see their dresses torn, you see them wearing torn shoes, and the family members are dressed smartly, just know there is a question mark on this Christian. Mm. You know, we are the light of this world. We have to shine in darkness. We have to, to represent the kingdom of God. How comes all your children are dressed smartly, and the lady who helps you to take care of them is looking so shabby, so ugly, you know, no vaseline, no nothing, because you're paying them some few coins. You're always insulting them, abusing them, and you call yourself a Christian. God is watching. God is watching. In Matthew chapter 25, from verse 31, it's called the separation of sheep and goats. The separation of sheep and goats. This, this particular topic of the poor and our duty to the less fortunate, thing is not taught in churches. It's, so, it's like a phenomenon. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31. And the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed you, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took you in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we you sick, or in prison, and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Of a truth I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them, them on the left hand, 
Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not unto one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So Jesus is separating the sheep from the goats based on those that took care of their fellow man who was poor, unfortunate, or in a bad situation. And Jesus, based on this criteria, the sheep are being separated from the goat. Jesus didn't say, I was in church and you brought me tithe and you sowed a seed and you brought me offerings. He didn't talk about that. He made no mention of that. He said, I was in an unfortunate situation and you cared for me when you were caring for the poor. And that's why this thing is in the middle of the gospel. It's critical that you focus on this thing, that you make it a priority when it comes to your resources to take care of the less fortunate. And I'm not talking about, I'm not saying we should not give to pastors or ministers or whatever. We personally support ministries. We, we support ministries. But this thing should be the priority. It should be first when it comes to your resources. Who have I not helped today? Every day it should pass through your mind. Is there anyone in an unfortunate situation? When you pray, you say, Father, please send me to someone who's in an unfortunate situation so that I can help them with my resources, which you have entrusted me with. Hmm. That's Christianity. That's Christianity. Hmm. All this other religious stuff, it's just a bunch of religion. What are you doing for your fellow man? That's Christianity. So, sure. yeah. So, I pray that that stronghold of seed sowing and looking for shortcuts to get riches, which is vanity anyway, Looking for shortcuts to, you, 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 what did you give for Jesus to give his life for you? What did you give for the Father? What seed did you sow for God to give the greatest gift? So if God could give the greatest gift, Jesus, why, did, why is it that you feel that you need to bribe God to bless you? Or bribe God to deliver you? Or bribe God with a seed, with a seed to the prophet for healing? Mm -hmm. All of this nonsense. A lady requested to see me at church. And she came and she was trained to put money at the feet of the of the pastors. And she did that. I told her, when you come here, don't don't do that to me. In fact, mm -hmm. I even had to go into my bag mm -hmm. and get money and add to what she had given and put in her bag. Because she came, I would see she needed even money. She could have even walked from wherever she had come, but because of this kind of doctrine that has uh, entered the church, she felt like and she told me, we were told that never to go to the house of God empty-handed. Now, what if you don't have? Mm. God will not attend to you. No. <laughs> so, mm. so, so, so much lies. That's it, he know you don't yeah. have? Yes. Mm. Mm. And she started crying even. She told me, I, I walked a very long distance. I didn't even know where the transport to take me back was going to come from. I was, I'm even shocked that you can even get money from your bag and give me the pastors have been going to they ask for consultation fee they ask for sacrificial fee mm. you have to sacrifice for your problem to go mm. they ask for tithe you have to to give tithe the house here, is 10 percent mm. they have to mm. you have to give uh, building offering mm. you have to give love offering all the offerings you have to give them before god you, 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 the, you, you, the house is closed because of rent arrears mm. but you have to give a sacrifice that the, mm. the problem may be prayed for mm -hmm. so tell me you, you have it is to use common sense mm -hmm. what will you do first the bank yeah. is coming to take your property you have yes. to give a you give, you give a sacrifice mm -hmm. a debt free offering eh? <laughs> how now <laughs> <laughs> you don't have food but you give sacrifice that god may help mm. yeah. it's a lie and just now but just think if the bible says and if that man of god is saying it is better to give than to receive 
<laughs> then how come? Give. Then how come he, he continues to receive? He should give. He's the leader. He's supposed to be the, an example. You give to the poor. You don't take offerings and seed from them and from widows and from and from those that can't afford any. Those being thrown out of their house. You are the one supposed to pay that rent or to get them out of that situation and deliver them out. So there's a lot of backwardness. There's a lot of things that come from the kingdom of darkness because it is in the kingdom of darkness where you must sow a seed for anything. You must, you must give. If you want anything in the kingdom of darkness, there's something you have to give up every time. Every time. Every time you sow a seed nothing for this. For there's nothing for free. That's the kingdom of darkness. But in the kingdom of God, God has already given you everything. And now, when it comes to blessings, when it comes to finances, there are simple principles in the kingdom of God. Do you want to see abundance? Do you want to see blessings? Learn to give to the poor. Learn to give to those who are less fortunate. Learn to do well. In this final scripture, um, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. It's a very powerful scripture. Isaiah chapter 1. Here it is, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. It says, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Take care of the widow. You know, when the, when the husband dies, the brothers, the family members come and take everything from the widow and leave the widow and the children with nothing. So plead for the widow. Take it, meaning share your resources with that one. All of a sudden, she's poor. She's left impoverished. Rectify that situation. Anywhere you see injustice, be a hero. That's how God. That's what God wants to see. God wants to see heroes. Every time you give to the poor, you're saying, "I disagree with the systems of this world. I disagree with the injustices of this world. I rebel against the God of this world, and I choose to give to the poor." and uplift the standard of living of the, of the unfortunate. Jump over to Psalms 82. Hey, the Holy Ghost is just giving me all kinds of scriptures. Psalms chapter 82. Psalms chapter 82 from verse 1. Can I read? Mm-hmm. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Then it says Selah, which means stop and think about that. Because right now, that's what is exactly is going on. We, we are accepting the persons of the wicked. We're giving to the rich and we're and ignoring the poor. You sow a seed. They call giving to a rich, to a rich man, sowing in good ground. Said it's a lie of the devil. You see these doctrines of devils, they call that sowing in good ground. He says, How long will you just judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Then he gives clear instructions from verse 3 Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And then he knows that his children can be so disobedient. He can give a direct order and they still won't listen. So he continues lamenting. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said you are God. So giving to the poor, those are the foundations of the earth. Imagine. Sharing with your fellow man. Uplift the standard of living of someone who's in a terrible situation. Rescue them out. That is the foundation of the earth. Those are the foundations. As those, are, those are the systems that God has established in the earth. He said, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. O God, arise. O God, arise, O God. Judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. So the entire chapter is just talking about this, this topic of justice and judgment of doing the right. Thing. That's what God wants to see in the earth. He wants to see justice and judgment. Wow. This testimony of yours has blessed me. Mm. That part, of, especially about when he sat upon his throne 
and the stars formed a rainbow round about destiny. you. Destiny. People's destiny. Yeah. Believers, your destiny is in the hands of God. Mm. That was amazing. So, to believers and those that do not know the Lord, I want to urge you, give your life to Christ. If you don't know the Lord, if you've never received Christ, we're going to give Beth an opportunity to lead you to Christ. So you just pray this prayer with her as she leads you to Christ. So you will lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. Just say a prayer, uh, you lead them and uh, to Christ and they can repeat after you. Amen? Amen. All right, so go ahead and pray for them and uh, lead them to Christ and then I'll, I'll pray for us afterwards. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Everlasting God, we thank you and we worship you this evening because mm -hmm. you're so good. Thank you because of our audience, O oh God. Thank you for the power of salvation that is in Christ Jesus. And that is what we speak now to each and every soul that has body and that has watched this video this day, O oh God, and even after this, O oh my God. Mm. I pray that their souls may be turned back to you, O oh Jesus Christ, mm. because you are still loving them. You are still calling them, O oh Redeemer. Mm. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they shall come unto your kingdom, that each and every soul that will watch this video, O oh God, will not perish. We speak the word that they will not perish in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Lord, we pray for each and every one who have watched and they have made up their might to, to come to Jesus. We pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, that your salvation will rest upon them right now, that their names will be erased from the book of death, and it shall be written in the book of life. And from now they are your children, they are, and from now they are yours. They are in your frock, and no one can snatch them from you, Christ of God. Thank you because they are yours now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for those that have not known you, O oh God, in the right way. They have been hiding in religions. We pray that right now that your mind may be opened. That they may know you, Christ of God, in the right way. That they may know you personally, how much you love them. And that they may live their wicked ways, O oh God. We pray that for the release of those that are bound by religions, those that are bound by doctrines, and even those that have been and been persuaded, and those that have been even initiated into the kingdom of darkness, that they be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, you have not given up or upon them, oh Lord. You told me not to give up upon any soul that has body. Oh God, each and every soul that is in the body, I am claiming it into your kingdom. No matter how far they are, I claim them. You you told me not to give up. I will not give up unto those witches. Mm. I am not giving up unto those that are devil worshippers. Yes. I am not giving up, oh God, unto satanists and freemasons. Mm. Oh God, I claim them. Mm. I claim them. Yes. Oh, the souls of men. Mm. I am crying for the souls of men. Mm. I know you died for them. I know you loved them. Mm. They have the body. They are not dead. They are born they are not dead. Mm. They are not gone. They are under the sun. Mm. Oh Lord, I know you will deliver them. Mm. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this chance. I know the power of your word will work wonders. Will work wonders, oh Lord. Mm. It will touch many. It will teach many for mm. the glory and honor of your name. All this we pray, trusting and believing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. And I'll just repeat after me. And uh, I think I'll just have to lead the, them to Christ. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I have heard your word. I have I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And you raised him up on the third day. And you raised him up on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. And from today henceforth. And from today henceforth. I live for you. I live for you. 
blot my name out. Blot my name out. From the book of death. From the book of death. That I may not appear in that place. That I may not appear in that place. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Show me where I must go. Show me where I must go. To learn your word. To learn your word. And to keep the commandments. And to keep the commandments. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. That that place. That that place. Where Beth had gone. Where Beth had gone. I may enter. I may enter. One day. One day. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Yes. I pray that this testimony has blessed you. And if it has blessed you as it has blessed us, uh, feel free to uh, be a blessing to Beth. It was not easy for her to come here. Mm. And so uh, I just want to encourage you, if there's anything that you're donating to Beth through PayPal, please just indicate this is for Beth, mm. B-E-T-H, eh? for Beth. And we'll know that this belongs to her and we'll send it to her. Please be, be a blessing to her. And I know that God will bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you. We God love you. God bless you. Mama Maisha. Amen. <laughs> Beth. God bless you. Keep the faith, brother. Amen. Keep the faith. Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare. The awesome third part of the Erica Testimonial Series. In this edition... Erica exposes witchcraft and reveals how it can be defeated and overcome in the name of Jesus. Everything you are going through now has an origin, and that origin can be dealt with, but you must know how. Find out in Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare, and overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name. Yeah, praise God, viewers. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for uh, supporting our ministry, for liking, sharing, uh, subscribing, and, and commenting. We really always look forward to hearing from you. Uh, for those whose messages haven't been responded to, we just want to take this opportunity to apologize. It's, it's just overwhelmingly too much. We have so many messages. So what we have decided to do is to, com because we find that most of these messages are repeated, like people ask the same questions. So we shall be picking different topics and discussing those topics, depending on the questions that are being asked. Also, we'll get a day where we'll just go through all some of the messages, not all of them, and we'll be answering in a video so that uh, we help as many people as possible. For those of you who want to buy our books, our books are available on Amazon Kindle and our website www.lifespiritual.org. You can also find them in Uganda Bookshop, a Joy Bookshop, and Aristoc Bookshops in Uganda. And uh, if you want to bless any guest that we invite on our platforms, you have our website information on the screen below. It is info at lifespiritual.org. The PayPal account is info at lifespiritual.org. You can also send donations through SendWave and World Remit uh, on the numbers that are running on the screen. Avoid people who come into the comment section asking you for money, uh, for prayers or prophesying and, and requesting that you donate uh, to them. We have foundations in Uganda and in Kenya. The only platform on which you can find information about our foundation is uh, www.lifespiritual.org. We do not have any account on Facebook. We don't have any account on Twitter, Instagram, and all those other platforms. So avoid getting conned. Otherwise, we love you so, so much. May God richly bless you. Thank you. We wouldn't have grown without your support, without your prayers, without your love. And just feel free to always ask, comment, share, subscribe. Please send these videos to other people so that they can also learn. May God richly bless you. We love you so much. Mama Maisha. You're